Well, with one player secured in this transfer window already, uh, only nine days gone uh, or 10 days gone, uh, West Ham fans are buoyed by the rumours that David Moyes is now looking to bring in at least another six players to the club this summer. There is a growing confirmation that one of those additional six players, of course, will be the permanent signing of Alphonse Ariola on a five-year deal with just final personal terms being agreed. Obviously, that's all to do with uh, his weekly salary. Uh, another one of those six players, whether we like it or not, still rumoured to be a uh, link Jesse Lingard. You know, I don't make the stories up. It's just what's out there. Uh, even though we were kind of told, you know, that's dead in the water now. Apparently, it's been resurrected again. And the rumour is that maybe, just maybe, Lingard will be uh, one of those signings. So let's say for argument's sake, let's just say for argument's sake, that out of the seven total signings that David Moyes is looking for this summer, uh, we've got Aged, uh, looks like we've got Ariola. And we could have uh, Jesse Lingard. And that means David Moyes is looking for another, another four players. Now, you would argue uh, that the positions of those four players would include a left back, uh, a central midfielder, at least one central midfielder, another attacking midfielder, and the holy grail of all transfers, a striker. Now, many fans really hope that this will really be the case. And the latest transfer story seems to suggest that after securing Areola, it is a striker who will be next on David Moyes' shopping list. Now, the latest stories are heavily suggesting uh, that the striker search may go no further than either Chelsea's Armando Broja or Sevilla's Yusef Ennesiri or Ennesri, sorry. Of course, the link to N. Nesri is obvious. He's a Moroccan international uh, teammate of uh, a Moroccan international teammate of uh, Nayef Aged. Uh, both players graduated to, through the Mohammed VI Football Academy, uh, which was set up by King Mohammed VI of Morocco. Uh, Aged left that academy in 2013 for Moroccan club Rabat, whereas uh, N. Nesri uh, left two years later joining uh, Spanish club Malaga. So whether they kind of train together in, in the academy, I don't know. Additionally, there's a story out there that his current club, Sevilla, are looking at potentially signing uh, Ben Brereton Diaz from Blackburn Rovers. Now, this suggestion went back about eight, nine months ago when Brereton Diaz was in his last uh, season of his contract. In fact, up until May uh, last month, uh, Brereton Diaz was about to leave uh, um, Blackburn, but uh, the one-year uh, clause was triggered and now he's with the club for another another season. However, that doesn't necessarily stop a club from maybe trying to sign a player. It could be now that um, Sevilla is still interested, but in, in this case, they'll then have to pay a fee. Whereas before uh, that uh, one-year extension was triggered, he would have been able to sign up for nothing. So I'm not so sure there's too much into that story, but that's what's being knocked around. However, um, it, 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 we're looking at the potential. Um, we've heard uh, the potential that um, uh, because uh, Yusuf uh, and, and Nesri hasn't had such a great season, whereas we offered £40 million about a year or a year and a half ago, he's now available for something like £25 million. And, and uh, of course, we also hear the stories that uh, we're ready to uh, um, make a bid for Amanda Broja, a Chelsea player, of £30 million. But which of these two players really fit into the Moyes strategy, into the Moyes system? In other words, which of these two players are going to be a close match to Mikel Antonio and what he delivers for David Moyes uh, as well? It's become a bit, a bit of an in-joke, hasn't it, amongst West Ham fans, that the only time Moyes will get another striker is if he can get a clone of Milan Mikel Antonio himself. So let's take a closer look at these two players and try to establish whether either of them are anywhere near close to what Mikel Antonio is like, what M Mikel Antonio uh, delivers to West Ham United. So let's start off with some basic stats uh, w uh, for both players. So uh, Amanda Brozier, uh, Chelsea striker, contracted until 2026, apparently valued at £30 million, 20 years of age. Yusuf N. Nesri, uh, striker for Sevilla, Contracted till 2025, now valued at around about £25 million, five years older than uh, Brozier, but five years more the wiser, I would say. 
Right, games played. These are just senior games played. Uh, for uh, Brogia, uh, 73 games, uh, 20 goals, four assists, and he's missed four games through injuries throughout that time. Uh, games for uh, career games for En Nesri, 201 games, 55 goals, eight assists, and he's missed 17 uh, games through injury. Let's look a little bit closer and just break that down into last season's stats. So for Brogia, we know he played for Southampton, 38 games, nine goals in total, one assist, and he missed two games through injury. Uh, and Nesri, he played 29 games, so nine games less, five goals, almost half that. Uh, one assist, sorry, that should say. Oh, three assists, my mistake. Didn't put that in there. Three assists. And uh, he missed 12 games last season through injury. So you could see that, uh, you know, he didn't have such a great season. But a lot of that was impacted by the fact that he, he was out injured for a dozen games. Now, had he played any more games? I don't know. You know, because uh, um, Sevilla, of course, were involved in things like uh, other competitions, like their domestic cups, uh, Europa League and all that sort of stuff. So maybe he would have uh, racked up a few more goals. We don't know. Um, now, um, in terms of uh, types of goals scored and, and other stats, etc., goals inside the box for Brogia and actually for Ennesri are the same. Five goals inside the box. Headed goals, interestingly. And Nesri, we could see that when he played against us in, this, in the uh, Europa League. He scored three of those goals with his head. Shot accuracy, interestingly, goes to uh, Broja. 58% shot accuracy uh, as opposed to 41% for Nesri. Uh, pass accuracy, roughly about the same, give or take. 66% for Nesri, 61% for Broja. Uh, take on success, you know, taking on players, etc. You could see, and uh, Brochure was much more inclined to pick the ball up and take that and, and take players on. Forty-seven uh, uh, percent uh, uh, in, uh, as opposed to twenty-nine percent success rate for uh, En Nesri. Aerial due success it goes to En Nesri again. He's got a better aerial due success rate of forty-seven percent as opposed to thirty-five percent for uh, Brogia. And ground dual success, around about the same. 37% uh, for Brogia, 38% for Ennesri. Right, so what about their style of play? Now, we talked about, you know, how how close are they to uh, to uh, Mikel Antonio? And I think this is where we now get a sense of, you know, which player might be the better option or the option that David Moyes thinks will suit the style of play that he wants West Ham United to play. Yeah, we know what what, what uh, Mikel Antonio does. You know, he's strong. He, he drops back in defence if he needs to. He runs the flanks. You know, he bullies uh, defenders, etc. He's kind of an all-out. He's not your traditional striker, is he? So I'm going to move over to Enresri and start with him because he is regarded as a traditional old-fashioned number nine. He's kind of plays in the middle of the park rather than sort of going out wide, etc. What's good about Enresri? He's got a great reading of the game, great anticipation, really good movement in the box, excellent at, at attacking the ball with his head, as we've already said, and he's a perfect target man, a real that kind of traditional number nine target man for crosses. Now, in that respect, you would imagine with West Ham United being quite good at uh, uh, crossing the ball into the net, you know, a lot of dead dead ball, um, uh, you know, goals coming from from dead balls, crosses, free kicks, etc. Then there's, and Nesri would kind of fit that mould. Um, he's comfortable with a long ball passing game. You know, he will... It will run a bit of the flank to pick up the ball, provides an outlet for his uh, uh, players. He's a good hold up player, but he doesn't, he's not the traditional, he's not the, the, it's not the customary game for him where he will continually go out wide for the ball. He's effective in a front three in the middle and he's got a high work rate and he presses from the front. So there's a lot of good stuff there that Nesri can, uh, can bring. Brozier. Now, he can play as a centre forward or he can play out wide as part of a three attacking players. He drops deep, which is something that N. Nesri doesn't necessarily do and provides an option during build-up play. He's calm and composed. He doesn't rush his attacking play. You know, he's he's very calm. The way he c controls the ball, even under pressure, he's, he's quite good at keeping the ball uh, at his feet. He uses his strength to hold off players, very similar to Mikel Antonio. He can score and he can create goals. One of the things that Enesri lacks over uh, Brojar is, that even though Brojar hasn't assisted as many goals, uh, he does, you know, he does 
kind of a bit more of a all-rounded team player. Um, and uh, he, he has an aerial threat, not as great as in Nesri, but he does still have an aerial threat. He can take on defenders with ease. He weighs in with his defensive duties and he just dropped deep, you know, to, to, to uh, help his team out. Uh, he's competitive and combative and he's got great bursts of pace. So you can see there's a lot of, there's quite a few similarities, but what weighs it just slightly for me for Brojar after doing this analysis and looking at the scouting uh, um, setup that's uh, bet between the two is that Brojar does look like he's a little bit more inclined to be a, Antonio type of player. He can take the ball out wide. He can play out wide. He can drop in in the middle. He can drop um, to help his uh, uh, defence out, midfield out, etc. You know, he's a bit of an all-round player. He, he, he uses his uh, strength uh, a bit like Antonio to try and uh, shrug off defenders, etc. There's a lot more about him that kind of reminds you of what Antonio might have been like as a striker at the age of 20. Um, so, i got a feeling that if anything, uh, if David Moyes is going to make the decision, um, well, he will make the decision. I think he's going to probably go for Brochard. Now, I, I kind of was, I wasn't sure when I was asked earlier today, you know, what do you think of, you know, do you think it's Brochard? Do you think it's uh, En Nesri? And I was thinking maybe it's En Nesri initially. I was thinking that, you know, perhaps En Nesri is, is a little bit uh, more the traditional type number nine, but we know. David Moyes doesn't want a traditional type number nine. He wants a player that can chase down defenders, that's strong in the challenge, that can defend from the front, that can play as a striker or can play out wide, you know, that can run the flanks and will fulfill his defensive duties. The next Antonio is quite possible. Thank you for joining me. Much appreciated. If you're new to the channel, please do subscribe, um, um, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and hit that bell notification to alert you as when I'm when I'm next on. There'll be a few other shows uh, coming up throughout the week. And of course, as usual, on every Monday night, uh, usually about 8, 8.30, uh, there's the live West Ham Weekly. So do join me for that as well. But do look out for other shows by hitting the subscribe and the bell notification. And thank you for watching. Much appreciated. And I'll see you very soon.